Hello. Okay. Um, good morning. So I just wanted to share a few tips on what I did to pass my um, AWS Cloud Practitioner certification, as you can see from right there. Um, my name is Tasha Penwell. I received my master's back in 2014. Um, I'm uh, working at Hawking College. I'm the computer science program manager here. Um, my certification issue date was June 3rd, just earlier this week, and it looks like it's actually good for three years. So it expires June 3rd, 2022. So I want to go through here and show you and share a couple of things that I did to help um, prep for certification and just any tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and um, go from there. So the resources that I used is um, the, the big one I used was a cloud guru and there's the hyperlink right there. You can do a free trial. Um, there is a, it's a subscription based um, of around $30 a month, I think like $29.95 or something like that. And they have um, where you can do a, do a lot of practice exams. AWS itself has an option to do practice exams, but I think it's like $20 for each one. And you don't get as many questions, which is kind of, I don't know, kind of odd about how they do it, but it is what it is. Um, so a cloud guru, I highly recommend. I use them a lot. Um, I also recommend using AWS white papers. They're very informative, but they are white papers, so they're also tend to be very long. Um, but so just read them. I don't really have a tip for that short of just reading them, just suck it up and read it. Um, AWS certification prep, there's a link right there. They're informative, but they are a little dry. I did all the videos, um, and then it keeps track of like your transcript because it's like through a uh, it's through a third party from AWS. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but um, they keep track of your transcripts of the videos that you've completed and the resources that you used. It's free and available online if that's how you want to do it. But there are also in-person classes available. I'm sure there's a cost to them. I didn't do them. Um, that might be something that we might offer here at Hawking College later on. I don't know. It's still kind of early in the game. So here, I got some of the links already up here. Here is a Cloud Guru. Um, I really like their website. It's easy to learn, easy to read. Um, you can see a lot of other people that use their um, resources. And they're not just AWS. I think they use Google and uh, Microsoft. And let's see. Courses. Yeah, they have AWS, Microsoft, Google Cloud Platform, Linux. So there's a lot of great courses in here. It's really easy to follow. It's really easy to use. The videos are pretty short and sweet because they're not too long where you kind of lose your attention span, which I'm very guilty of. Um, but yes, I highly recommend this. It's worth the 30 bucks a month, if you ask me. Um, so the other one that I had was White Papers. So here's the URL for the white paper. So you can select a category. Um, and once you go to the resources, let's go ahead and go to that. This is certification prep. Um, recommended path to take the AWS certified cloud practitioner exam. So you have the training classes. You can do digital, um, like I said, for four and a half hours or one day in the classroom. Review the exam guide and sample questions. Um, like I said, the sample questions don't, if I, from what I remember, wasn't that many of them for the, how many questions were actually on the test. There's 65 questions on the test. From what I can remember from the exam questions all through here, it's like maybe 15 questions. I don't know. But, you know, do review the exam guide. It tells you which white papers to read for which certification you're looking for. So, and then here's, go back to the white papers. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna try to find one. Okay, here's an introduction. So here is one version. This is December, 2018. So they update every so often. And this is a PDF version of one of the white papers. It's 93 pages, okay? It's just write it. I don't really have a suggestion other than that. You just gotta read it. Just take the time and read it. Devote so many hours a week or an hour a day and just read it so and they're not too bad i mean they're not totally boring it's just it's a lot of reading 
let's go back to here. So white papers, the certification prep, the certification prep. Like the videos are a little dry, the digital online, not going to lie, they kind of are. Um, like I said, they're free and available online and classes, in-person classes are available. I didn't do that, but that might be something that um, we might be offering here at Hawking College um, to be determined on that. Study tips. Um, this is my biggest one is make your own flashcards. Um, I'm big on, you know, the act of writing. It helps with the um, understanding and the retention in your brain of just going through the motion of writing it. So in a way that you understand, because sometimes, you know, especially in the tech field, you have a lot of $10 words and it's just like you have to kind of dumb it down for yourself to have like a better understanding of what it is that you're trying to do. So this is flashcards that I made. Um, I think I went through like 400 index cards. And what I did was this, like I used um, the questions from a cloud guru, the practice exams um, as a place to you know get my questions. Um, so like I would write a question on one side, um, cost, cost and fault tolerance can be optimized by using, um, the trusted advisor. And I would write the question several different ways. And so I would have a better understanding of it and obviously created more flashcards. Um, so that's my, that's my biggest recommendation is make your own flashcards. Um, do the practice tutorials available for, um, for, for your free with, that's available for free with your AWS account. You do have to create an AWS account, which does require a credit card to create an account. But if you delete the stuff after you create them, you won't be charged. Just make sure you delete it. Read a lot. Like I said, one of those white pages or white papers for 93 pages. Practice a lot. Um, I did the practice exams daily on a cloud guru just to for the repetition and just make sure I have a better understanding and improving my score overall. Don't ignore the white papers. Um, I did not put as much focus on the white papers as I probably should have. Um, but that's something I've learned for the next one. But I still passed. So I'm not saying just read the white papers. Don't ignore the white papers. Um, what would I do differently? Um, I would pick up the notch on my studying earlier. So that was something I kind of thought, you know, I don't know what I thought. Um, I would just start studying harder earlier before my exam. I would read more white papers and take better notes and make into flashcards. Um, one of the things that I did was actually just, you know, a single subject notebook and make notes as I'm watching the videos, tutorial videos on a cloud guru, going through the practice exam questions. I would just make notes. And then that's when I would transfer it into flashcards. So it was repetitive writing, which takes obviously longer, but it helps encode it in your brain a lot better. Do the, do more online tutorials. I could have done those more. Um, not, not as much as I think iCloud Guru is a great resource. I think I probably relied a little bit too heavily on them because it was like already there. I didn't have to you know dive into it too deep. They were great, but I should have taken advantage of the AWS resources more, which they did recommend. I just, you know, time was an issue and it seemed like the best choice. So I'm really glad I still did the iCloud Guru, but I could have done better on use, utilizing the other AWS resources. Other tips and resources, um, Exam Pro. Um, if you just Google Exam Pro, it'll take you to something like an exam, examination service, um, exam test prep thing for OBGYN. So that's the actual URL for Exam Pro. It's, I'm actually found it um, through a blog that I was reading and I contacted the, the, the CEO through LinkedIn. Um, I like it. I just only found out about it about a, lot, about a week before my exam last week when I was in Chicago, and um, I just didn't get around to using it. I just you know, kept using the resources I was already doing. But as I prep for my next certification, I'm going to look at this a little bit more. 
and just schedule the test. I know I kept putting off the test, scheduling the test because um, I just wanted to wait till I was ready to schedule the test because it costs a hundred bucks for the test. And I don't, and I don't want to fail it. So I kept putting off scheduling it until I'm ready, until like I'm done studying and I'm ready. But then it, it didn't have that sense of urgency. And you, I, for me personally, I need that sense of urgency to schedule the damn test. And you have the urgency. It's like, oh crap, I have two months. And that's what I did. Um, so once I figure out what the next certification level I'm going to be doing, I'll schedule that. I need the urgency. But I'm going to give myself probably about four or five months out. Um, what's next? So uh, associate level of certification to choose from. Those are the three different um, certifications. Last I saw anyways, that might have changed. Let's see. I'll let these up. Let's see, what are they doing now? Okay, that's the foundational, this cloud practitioner. And then here's the associates. Okay, they changed the graphics. Foundational, which is what we have right now. Associate is um, the architect operations and developer, kind of which role you want to be in. There's solutions architect, sysops admin and developer. And then there's professional and specialty. Um, Alexa skills builder. I might look into that as well. It's kind of fun. But anyways, so that's what my next step is. You know, um, figure out which level certification that I want to do that's going to be the best benefit for me and Hawking College. So actually I do have an upcoming, some upcoming presentations talking about AWS in two different perspectives. One as a practitioner um, utilizing the AWS resources and one as an educator utilizing AWS educate resources. Um, on June 14th is how cloud computing can help small businesses. It's sponsored by Gay County Chamber of Commerce um, and Hawking College Computer Science Department. It's gonna be held at the Paulson Memorial Library in Galapagos, Ohio. Um, on August 6th, I have looking up into the AWS cloud, the be at the GTech Summit at Genoa Area High School, discuss resources available through AWS Educate and Teach How. Um, AWS Cloud Computing Services in high school and collegiate levels. So the first one was how cloud computing can help small businesses. Um, there's the page to that, and I'll include the, this link and some other links that I've talked about in the comment section or notes section of the video. Um, yeah. The GTEC Summit that I mentioned is in August. It's raining and thundering and storming outside. Okay, there we go. So that's a GTEC Summit. Presenters, let's see if I'm on there, have a look. Okay, so. embedded in there since I can't do a search. Anyways, I'm not going to waste your time on trying to go through all that. But anyways, I'll share the link with you all. On that, um, so if you have questions, that's my email, and you can feel free to text me um, at that number right there. So if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.